Welcome back to Live with the Mod, the Poet, powered by Revolution of One, where we have the greatest guests and the most powerful conversations. And today is no different. We got the author, mindset coach, motivator, the good brother, Eric Bigger, in the studio with us today. How you doing today, my family? Hey, man, I'm happy to be here. I'm phenomenal. Life is good. And uh, it's miracle season, man. It's a miracle to be here. So I'm happy to be a, be here with you in this space. No, I love that miracle season. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about miracle season in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I wanted to talk about the the, the origin story real quick for um just just to give people a, a basic outline of of the 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 story and the background. Um, you 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 were born and raised in Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, born okay. and raised. We could, West could, Baltimore, WB. West Baltimore. <laughs> So 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 take yeah, us so yeah. take us back to talk to us about Baltimore and, and and what that means in terms of a mindset you know because everybody um has a, has a, a hometown everybody has an origin story and I think um sometimes our cities they don't define us but they they can tell a lot about what either we've overcome or what nurtured us so t- tell us about Baltimore what, what what it does for the mindset that Baltimore mindset yeah Baltimore is an authentic, uh, sometimes insane <laughs> criminal minds, right? But mm. what happens in that aura, in that, in that vibration, you got to have thick skin. And normally as a man, as a young boy, you're not supposed to show your emotions. You got to be mm. tough. Oh, you got to somewhat be cool. You even sell drugs or you play ball if you're one of the guys, right? Mm. So in my journey, I always was an avid learner. I always did well in school, but I always... I had rapport with people and personality, you know, I was always a leader amongst my friends, played basketball. Um, but I also was surrounded and raised by men who were kingpins, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I had a different upbringing. My blueprint was the men who was running the neighborhood was uncles and fathers and cousins. So that was my blueprint of what a man should be in that position. And so mm. I had a lot of different experiences probably than some people. But I always look thought about how can I be different, but still kind of maintain the same type of presence, but more in a positive way. Mm. Because all their decisions led them to failure and jail and some, you know, to the graveyard. Mm. So, you know, just being very observant, playing basketball. I tell people basketball changed my life because it gave me my identity. Right. Basketball was a frat. And I tell parents all the time, you have to use the sport and don't allow the sport to use you. Basketball was a vehicle to get me through life. So thank God for basketball kept me focused as well as school where that's all I want to do is play basketball and be an NBA player and play profession. So I never would like look to like selling drugs, never sold a drug, never did a crime, never thought about committing a crime, but I was aware of the crimes being committed and aware of some of the people who probably was doing it. Mm. But that was my environment. That was my normalcy. You know, you just like, oh, it's the norm. Single dad, dad was a, a provider, not a guider, right? Bought mm-hmm. me the sneakers, the video games, the Averex jackets, the Tims, the Nike boots, all the things you want as a kid. Then as you get older, you just want that time. And when you get mm-hmm. that time, you realize not that not that he did he failed me, he just the best he could, mm-hmm. right? Because you know, as we get older, depending on our relationship with our parents, we have this built-in res- resentment without understanding what they went through. Mm. So as I evolved as a human being and got more knowledge on myself and others, I'm able to have compassion and grace and say, you know what? I'm glad I came up this way because it made me better. So Baltimore is just a tough, tough city. You got to have thick skin and we going to get it if we want it, if we're willing mm. to do the work. So I was always willing and was never lazy. So if I don't like something, I'm gonna change it. And you t- you talking about basketball? Um, how how serious did you take the game of basketball when you was when you was playing it? So basketball was life, bro. Like it's it's interesting, and I want the listeners to really tap into this because I posted something yesterday about self concept. Hmm. I played basketball most of my life since the age of six. I wasn't the best player, but I felt because I had extreme work ethic people respected me, right? And I could play good enough. 
Like I didn't get honorable mention in all Metro team in high school. And I didn't win those state titles. I played AAU. I went to junior college, played for two years. I was a walk on at Hampton for a few months. The interesting thing I didn't realize until I stopped playing basketball that Mm -hmm. a lot of the guys in my peer group that were better than me, D1 scholarship, top 20 Nike camp, all American. They said they only was playing because I was playing. I had mm. friends, older brothers saying like, E, I thought you was better than everybody. I'm like, what you mean? He's like, you did whatever you want on the court. But go back to self-concept because I didn't get the accolades. I didn't get the, the awards. I didn't think I was that great. Mm. Right? So I didn't see myself as this superstar basketball player. I just thought I was good enough to play with the best. And I'll tell people this analogy. It's like Steph Curry playing open gym, right? But he don't know he's Steph Curry. And he's shooting the ball. And he, he making shots. And, you know, and God's like, bro, you know you can shoot the ball, right? They're like, really? They're like, yeah, you can shoot the ball. And then he, it clicks like, oh, shit, I can shoot the ball. So he has a different intentionality to shooting the ball where I didn't get no feedback growing up. So I became the feedback for everybody else. And I was motivating and inspiring my friends who were better. I was their hype man driving my friend uh, five hours to Raft, Virginia to get a scholarship. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pumping my boy up, getting him in different colleges in different you know, countries and all these things. And then it wasn't until I kind of got some type of public success when I realized I was it. I was the catch. Mm-hmm. But God showed me that in a different realm. But I didn't feel it in the basketball realm because of, I looked at the outside external achievements as I'm saying that because I don't want people out here listening, thinking because they're not getting an award or they don't have that they're not as great as the people who are. Because there's a thing they say, your talent will take you where your character can't keep you. Mm. And in some instance, your character will take you where your talent can't keep you. I had talent. I had character. I just wasn't confident about my talent. Mm. Right. To, you know what I mean? So that that IP, that intellectual property, that self-concept of self didn't allow me to evolve in the talent space because of my perception of self. And then as I got old, real NBA, NFL players, I'm like, hold on. I'm breaking records in these gyms. I'm, like, I'm asking my boy, like, what is it? He said, E is perception. He said, my boy, he, he ran the Olympics. He's like, E, I can't beat you. I'm like, yeah, you run. He's like, bro, I'm an Olympian. He said, you know what it is? You know how to compete. That's why you're good. Some people are talented and they don't know how to compete. So all these synchronicities and these downloads over the years, I'm like, oh, Mm. wow. I get it now. I always was the guy. I just didn't think I was. So that allowed me not to get the things I should have got. But it's all basketball changed my life, gave me life. And to a lot of guys out there, I got to the point when I stopped and that's when I said I had to go pro in life, right? Mm. Had to be a professional in life. And that's when all the learning and the reading and discovering who am I. And you can have an identity crisis if you don't know yourself. So I had to unpack who is Eric Bigger and what does how does he show up in the world if he's not playing basketball? <laughs> mm. If he's not doing good in uh, an amazing journey and the hardest work we will ever do in life is on ourselves. So cheers to that. It's never easy. Mm. It's crazy when you when you say uh I didn't go pro in basketball, I went pro in life. That was a quote I was gonna bring up. Uh that's powerful, man. And um yeah. even from just that whole analogy in itself when you think about how athletes approach, uh, professional athletes approach the game of basketball, you know, like how can one pro- approach life in a professional way from, you know, when to practice or where to practice or know what to practice on because life is so vast. Like the game of basketball has rules. It has, you know, you can't go outside of this line. Like, you you can't practice a shot beyond this line, but in life, it's like, where do they tell you the line is to practice beyond? Like you can't practice. It's so vast. And like, so how do you wake up or how do you find how to practice and become a professional in the game of life? That's a great question. 
the 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 number one line is the line within, the line within your mm. soul, the line within your mm. heart. Oh, we've been programmed and conditioned from within, right? We've mm. been programmed to listen, and follow, and do instead of sit, be present, and be right. Mm. Because it's uncomfortable when you really get to discover who you really are. Like, oh, I'm stubborn. Oh, I got a big ego. Oh, I'm not as good as I think I am. Mm. So then we continue to hide behind followers, women, money, fame, sneakers, being cool, jewelry, whatever. And it's like, bro, you don't know who you are. You're empty. Mm. So I always tell people, the line starts with Finn, but you have to think about who do you look up to? Who are your leaders? Who are your, your idols? Who are the people that you give all your power away to because you look up to them? So what I did was I started studying successful people. Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, Jay-Z's, P. Diddy's, at, at the, you know, all these guys, right? And I started tapping into like the books, Think and Grow Rich, As a Man Think of, The Secret, The Bible, of course. Um, and I realized, it was like, hold on, what are they doing? There's a pattern here. Oh, they're meditating. Oh, it's their mentality. Oh, okay. Oh, they're setting their intentions. They're following their own counsel. Oh, so I'm learning all these things. And then I realized it's a mentality. It's a lifestyle, just like going to the gym. But like you said, no one gives us that line in life. They tell mm-hmm. us how to go to school, how to take the course. They even tell us how to date the woman or, you know, pay your ties, mm-hmm. right? Or how to start an LLC. But no one is teaching us about the LLC, the S Corp of our life, of ourself. Mm. We don't know the marriage of ourselves. We don't know the partnership of ourselves, mm. the relationship of ourselves. We don't know that. Mm. We yeah. just know what they tell us. Well, who are you if you don't know yourself in those things? So I had to get to, and I just think I was blessed with a gift of curiosity. It just led me to so many things like books. And I started tapping into like numerology, bro, and astrology and really doing some deep work. Like, oh, there's things in my chart that is written. Like life is somewhat written, but to some people who don't have that. So I'm trying to go deep, wide and far because I'm trying to figure out. Why is the sky blue? And who give words uh, mean, right? Like, mm-hmm. that's how I think sometimes. I'm so curious. Who wrote the Bible and what place and what mindset were they in? I came up with this miracle season. That came to me. I channeled that. I didn't see it somewhere. You know, so it's really a self-discovery process, starting with the line within and really getting comfortable with that shadow part of yourself that you do not like. Mm-hmm. And I just think my my intuition, like I've been spiritual since I've been a child, you know, so my discernment, listen to it my entire life. That's how I moved that life, intuition. And that's just been a blessing in so many ways uh, that I, that many probably can relate or others, others may not, but it's helped in my process. And that's what I was going to ask, you know, along this journey, um, how did you finally make it out to L.A.? You know, coming from Baltimore and finally making out to L.A. What was that process between there and to where you're at now? Yeah, so. You know how I talk about my mom and my dad. And, you know, in my lifetime, there was things I wanted from them that I didn't get or I anticipated or I had. I, don't know, I didn't have enough information, but I will say when my mom and mm-hmm. dad did apply their presence or that message into my life, it always helped. So my mom was the reason I went to Hampton University. She was the one who helped me pick the schools I went to, right? Mm-hmm. Baltimore City, I went to City College High School, the college preparatory high school. She helped me. She was Hampton. When I graduated in 2010, Barack Obama spoke at my graduation, so that was kind mm. of a moment. And my grandmother, great grandmother was able to see all those things. I came home and I had a government job at the Census Bureau, um, working in the financial uh, department. I did an internship the year prior, my junior year, going into my uh, senior year. 
And I didn't like it. I didn't like the cubicle life. It was born. I was going to sleep in meetings. I'm always looking for work. I was just like, eh. So I decided to, you know, move my stuff out of Hampton, bring it back to Baltimore. And I'll never forget my dad. My dad had been in the streets. My dad had been stabbed. He had been shot at. He had been incarcerated. He had been a bunch of money and they been on drugs. My dad is like a real warrior, super mm-hmm. spiritual. My dad is super spiritual. That's where I believe I get my spirit from. Strong, strong, strong soul. And my dad, when I was sitting in his house, and my dad, he's giving me advice, but not advice like this. He's like, you know, E. So I said, E, you know, I don't think you should be here. I think mm-hmm. you should go to LA or something. Baltimore ain't it, man. You know, it's dangerous here. And you know, I'm like, yeah, Pac, okay. But mind y'all, I'm a great listener. So from there, I go to a friend's mom uh, house to get a graduation gift from graduating from college. And she's like, Eric, you know, I'm so proud of you. You should, you should get out of Baltimore. You should go to LA. Maybe you get a job on like Indeed.com or Career Builder. My mom doesn't know this person. This is my one of my close friends' mm-hmm. mom. So me, intuition, I'm, I'm dialed in. These are two signs, right? My dad, my friend's mom. Boom, I had to go make my last trip to Hampton, VA, to clean out my apartment. I said, let me go apply for a job in LA. So I applied for a job. Submitted the application. Within two hours, I get an email back, we want to interview you. I'm like, bing, bingo. Three signs. One, two, oh, I got an interview. So from that moment, intentions, right? I said, I got to have a graduation party. I had a graduation party, no lie. I graduated May 9th, 2010. I had a graduation party June 5th, 2010. With a, with a one-way ticket with $1,000 to my name, June 12th. And I left and I never came back. I never looked back. And when I got, and this is another thing for people listening, how we, words have meaning and how we perceive life. So when I first got to LA, my aunt, uh, my aunt, she, at the time, she put me in a hotel for like two weeks. And then I stayed with another friend for two weeks. And then I ran into, uh, you, everyone knows Pinky, Pinky Aisha Cole, who owns Slutty Vegan. That's like my, that's like my, my homegirl, like sister, we went to high school together. I ran into her out here and she was grinding, struggling and, you know, doing what she had to do to make ends meet, but she was such an angel. And she let me hold her car. She was going back to Atlanta for a sorority meeting. We was just cool. She helped me find my first stuff. And I'm saying all this to say, in that time, I was using everything that the universe was giving me to benefit me while I was out here. Because mine only had $1,000. I'm in LA. I'm 22 years old, bro. Mm-hmm. I don't know one person. Shouts out to Nick the Barber, you know, celebrity barber. Uh, who let me stay with him and his wife for two weeks in West Hollywood. Uh, and what I, what I was going to say was, when I got here, most people back home were saying, when you coming back? And I would get upset. Like, stop Why are people asking me that? Like, I would get offended. Like, I would really mm-hmm. bother. I didn't understand in their mind, my decision was a risk to them. So I never looked at LA like, oh my God, I'm going to the other side of the country to pursue whatever. And at the time it was grad school. That's why I was coming out here and I didn't work out, but it was a decision. And by me coming from the, the, the space and perspective and paradigm, I'm making a decision and I'm not taking a risk. I was able to evolve and develop in this space and not live from a scarcity space, even though I was on eggshells because I had to figure it out. But my mentality wasn't fear. It was, I don't want to be in B-more. I'm going to figure this shit out by any means. And that's what happened. And then over time, <clears throat> you go through your trials, your tribulations, you meet people, you see people, and you just grow, bro. Like you just you just grow because you want to and you have to. But then you're looking at people back home crying and struggling. I'm hopping on planes, booking one ways because I don't got enough money to get a round trip. And I'm going home and I'm like, y'all got heat, y'all got food, y'all got jobs. I'm out here I'm trying to figure it out. And I'm like, my back against the wall, and they over here complaining. 
I was like, oh, they must don't know what life. And I and, and it made me upset when I went back to Hampton the first year for homecoming. I was like, wow, I really was in La La Land in college. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what the real world was. I had it good. These people don't know what real life is. This shit is tough. But I just persevered, man. And I always just had big faith. And I never thought about going back home. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that was never, you know? So it's like I was all in and I dealt with it. And now today I'm still all in and there's still challenges and things I'm going through and getting over as a man. But I will say the work paid. And when you want something, you'll figure it out. If not, you'll find an excuse. So I was willing to do the work and um, it landed me here 12 years later. Mm. And what what a, a lot of people know you from is the the show The Bachelorette. And uh, yeah, I, I heard well, you. I actually yeah, heard you yeah. on a, a different a different podcast, and um, you said a powerful statement. And and uh, I want to impact the whole experience. But um, you said yeah. it didn't pay, but the people paid attention. And I was like, Oh yeah, mm. yeah. So so yeah, could you I was doing Instagram down? videos, bro. Mm. Yeah. So. Or, so I've always been positive. I'm probably the most positive person most people know. And this is why I say astrology and numerology, all it makes sense because when I look up my chart, like my birthday is March 9th. So I'm a Pisces, I'm sensitive, I'm intuitive. But March 9th is in the Pisces horoscope, right? Mm. My moon sign is a Sagittarius, right? So my mood and emotions like a sad. That's what all my fire and my motivation comes from. But they're usually happy, go lucky, optimistic people. My rising sign is a Libra. Libras are more like balance, right? So I just have like a very, and then my attitude numbers are three. I'm giving a lot of information people probably don't understand, mm. but this is, this is who I am and this is how I show up. Not that life is always positive. Of course, living in Baltimore is a lot of negative experiences. So on Instagram, my Instagram was 15 seconds. I was doing videos. Motivation Monday, Wisdom Wednesday, was Positive Friday. And in between those days, I would have quotes. I would just take quotes and put it on my page. I think at the time, I had like 3,500 followers and people was like, man, are you putting out all these videos? Ain't nobody paying you. I was like, yeah, it's cool, but they paying attention. That's all that matters. And then so when the show came, shout out to Aisha Cole, Pinky, who owns Slutty Vegan. Mm. She gave me the alley hoop for the opportunity because someone named Thea Washington was casting for The Bachelorette and they was looking for people from Baltimore. I happened to be in LA. Pinky sent me a screenshot, Facebook cast, like, would you want to do this? I'm like, yeah. She sent it to the girl, Thea. I got interviewed and the rest is history. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? And that was 2017. So mind you, 2000, everything up until I've been here, that's my seven, the seven years when I, I had a break, right? Mm-hmm. But prior to that, I was doing the work. I was working on myself, reading books, learning, posting the videos, right? So when I went on a show, I was on TV for 10 weeks. I went to six countries. I fell in love. My life changed. I came home. I took all the motivation and positivity away. I deleted all the posts. I deleted all the quotes. So they just know me as the guy from The Bachelor. They don't know Eric from Baltimore that had to figure it out to be, to even attract that opportunity. So now that I'm like, slowly evolving back into that somewhat, you know, I have a book out a hundred mindset, change your energy, change your life. I have, you know, merch, it's miracle season. I say all that to say positivity, motivation, inspiration, wisdom. I don't, I am it. I don't have to speak it. I'm it because I study it. I engulf it every day. So that's how I show up in life. I don't have to be, I don't have to be more. I am I am motivation. I am positivity because of the reps and the work. And it got me far. And, you know, Gary Vee always say positivity always wins. The truth, man. Because, then you know, anything, anything that's negative is a negative. <laughs> mm. So you got to turn mm. that negative into a positive. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's uh, it's been a journey. And uh, it's when, when you give your all to life life shows up for you. And Mm. I think at the time, my biggest challenge was I just had a really problem receiving in life. 
You know, I had an abandonment wound from my mom when I was a kid. So, you know, when you go to someone that that caters to you and you, you want something or need something and it doesn't come back the way you anticipate, it hurts, right? So you don't mm. want to feel that pain. You don't want to, so you rather just cover that up. And I became the people pleaser. I was the giver. So I would study people just to be in their life so they wouldn't abandon me. What do they need? I'm going to be that. Oh, they need me to listen. They need me to be their friend. So everything I wanted from my parents, I became for everybody else. But mm-hmm. it showed me it was also in the day. I still was getting a short end of the stick because people pleasing is, is, a, is, a, is a form of manipulation. You see? Mm. Still controlling them. You're controlling them not to leave you. So you're doing everything you know they need to keep them around. And then what happens is they think because you're so giving and so loving that you don't need anything. So what happens for a person who's a people pleaser who cannot ask for what they need and they have a, a, a void of uh, 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 receiving, they always get the short end of the stick because they want people to see life the way they see life. But no one's just seeing like that because they're not living from your paradigm. And this is why I got into astrology, numerology, mm-hmm. all human design, Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, all these tests because they say people who are so curious about others, when they were young, wish people would ask questions about themselves. So I was living life, I was living life to understand and not to be understood. So mm. I knew everything about everybody. Nobody mm. knew anything about me, bro. <laughs> and that's mm. when a disconnect was. I was like, oh, you running from yourself. You giving mm. all this wisdom and it's not like, you ain't giving to yourself. And the universe made it where going on that show, I had to give to myself. It separated me. And when I realized the energy I was giving to others was helping, but when I turn that energy into my life, my life changed, bro. It changed. And I'm like, oh, when I invest in me, your life is going to change. But I was neglecting myself because I was neglected as a kid. So I'm going to just keep neglecting me and I'm going to just serve you. (laughs) Mm. I'm going to make you happy and I'm going to be unhappy. But it was a pattern because I was trying to survive and I was protecting myself from being hurt again. So it's just, man, it's so much, but yeah. <laughs> do, you think, do you think that lack of attention or, or, or a lack of family structure can lead to that overextending and somewhat of like a social butterfly like complex, like you want a whole bunch of, and you're giving to so many people yeah. because you're trying to create like a second family? Yes, yes. And so here's the thing. And that's why I always hit on astrology because it's so much, it's so deep and the average person who don't know about it won't understand it, but people who study it will. I was going deep into my chart. It was handed like abandonment wounds, abandonment issue, this in the fourth house. You're going to have issues with everything. And my MC, mid heaven in a, a natal chart is like your reputation of how people, your social set, how people see you in the world. So I'm a Leo in that space, right? So how I show up in the world is motivated, inspiring. So God is so great. Because I was so diligent and disciplined, he brought it back around and he put me on TV. And all the Mm -hmm. love I ever wanted and all the attention I ever needed, I got it in a different way on a different platform. So that's why I'm like, God, don't make no mistakes, man. He's doing it for a reason. He got you. All the love and affection, bro, I've gotten it from being on. T- so once I just figured out, like, oh, I don't have no regrets. I'm living mm-hmm. my dreams. But I was so low and empty because my biggest fear up until that opportunity was that I'm not living up to my potential. And I thought I was going to get to a place where I wouldn't be able to reach my potential because I knew my potential. It's just like every time I would go, and get somewhere, I'll be like, no. I'll get a call back audition for a big commercial. No. I have a girl that I really like and I think think we're going, no. Mm. I'll get it, no. So when the show came, it was like, I'm so used to that, no, that I didn't mm. even believe it was real. And then when all those things start trans, this is real. Life is working for you because I was doing the work. Seven years, six years, five years five years prior to the opportunity. So we are the result of the work we did six months ago. 
All of us right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not what we did last night or two weeks or three weeks. All the work you did six months ago is showing up today. So talk talk about the importance of uh preserving the dreamer and not just the dream because you're talking about being in LA for years before the opportunity the big opportunity came and a lot of people they so focused on the actual dream that they don't think about like man me working uber and just preserving myself for that moment is me preserving the dream. You know what I'm saying? It's not all about, okay, well, I did this for the business today. I did this. I cultivated my mind today. I said some affirmations today. I woke up intentionally today. Like I woke up and and, and embraced positivity. I read a book today. That is preserving the dream, not just um, focusing on the dream all the time. Like preserving yourself is preserving the dream. And you got to survive. What happened was, when I got into Uber, so I think two, when I was 25, I think it was 2013 or 14. Toughest year of my life, to be honest, because I had quit working as a manager. I was a manager at Abercrombie and Fitch for like 18 months. I had started a, a mobile app called Eric Bigger Successful Living. That didn't do much, or do mm. anything really. So I was trying to take this entrepreneur journey with no information. And I had some clients, personal training. For like five or six months, and then boom, they said they didn't want to train no more. I was like, damn, I'm gonna make money. I went back to Amber Crumbin and Fitch, humbling as a model. And I was mm-hmm. folding clothes, right? Humbling when I was the manager for 18 months, right? Mm-hmm. When you took the mm-hmm. big in the dream, did that. Uh, I said it was personal training, and then I went to go work as a door guy at a nightclub. Shout out to Crocker, Crocker Club, downtown, Fifth Street, Fifth and Spring, LA. <laughs> Shout out to Tom Turner, a mentor of mine. He, he gave guys being there for like, I think I was there for two years. And I started like every, since for five, six years, I've been writing down in my phone, my notepad, like my expenses, my income. Like, so I started doing my numbers. I'm like, hold up, I made how much working at the club and working for someone? And I'm like, yo, I make more money working for myself. Mm-hmm. So that's when I really said, and that's when I really quit the job. I said, yo, I'm gonna do Uber full time and I'm gonna sell these Kangen water machines, alkaline water machines, and I'm a personal train. And bro, I was doing number of Ubers. I was doing like 700 to a thousand a week. Mm-hmm. I was putting that son. I was burnt out. You know, I was mm-hmm. doing, I would had the, I had the uh, what was it, uh seven to eleven shift, like seven in the morning to eleven a.m. And then I would do four to eight. This was, this was five days a week. And in the weekends, I'm doing 12 to 3 a.m. Because that's the nightclub. People come out and get your bonuses. So I had a little plan. Training still. I did those things because I had to survive and make money more than enough. But there was levels in my life where I realized, like, hold on. I make more money working for me. Why would I go work for someone else? Not to knock it. I just was aware, like, oh, this is something different. And there was a moment, bro, I lied to you not. I'm sitting on Wilshire in my car. I had a crisis Sebring 2010, my first car I bought. <laughs> um, I was there all over in that car. And I was sitting to myself like, man, I can't keep doing this, man. I can't keep, and like, I was literally in a car waiting for a ride, like parking mm-hmm. on Wilshire. And I got a call from a casting director because when you, when I went for the casting for the show, it was like, oh, we like you, we're gonna move your head. But then it was like crickets for a few months. So I'm thinking, I didn't get it. This had to be like December, bro. I think I might have did the interview in like September or something or yeah, or August. And I get the call, say, like, hey, is this Eric Bigger? And I'm like, yeah. And it's like, we think we want to bring you to our full casting in January, December 2016. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, it changed my whole life. In that moment, at least my energy, like, yo, I can't keep going Uber. I'm just burnt out. Mm. 45 to 50 hours a week. So having an Uber, having a mindset to train for myself, to, to, to pay myself, and to find, you know, businesses on the side to cultivate the dream and still be, be the dreamer, right? Mm. So I think this is what I know. It's not what I think. Brothers, men in general, I can't speak on women. We are so afraid to appear weak, to appear less than, 
that our pride is so big and ego so big that we won't humble ourselves and go get it. I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> you know, I don't care about, I'm gonna go get it. I'll go work. And that's what I was willing to do. And it was guys at the time that I was like, yo, bro, I'm telling you, bro, come through this Uber, get this money with me. And they're like, no, nah, man, I ain't doing that. And I promise you, five years, six years later, they doing Uber or Uber Eats or, you know, and it's like, man, why didn't you just listen to me back then? And then I'm now in this process where I didn't got Uber deals on social media. And they're paying me more than I probably made in two months, you know? I say that to say not to knock anyone, just to give people awareness, get out of your ego, get out of your pride, man. It's bigger than you. What are we living for? We got to really sit ourselves down like, what am I living for? I know what I want and I know what I don't want. I want to live the best and be the best and be around the best. And that's another thing. The environment of LA changed my life because of what I would see every day. Nice mm -hmm. homes, beautiful people, nice clips, the environment. But also, I always tell everybody, osmosis, man. Go where the money's at. Go where the wealthy people are. Get around it. If you're around Denzel Washington, LeBron James, even if Martin and Malcolm was living today and we was around them every day, you don't think our life would be different? Mm. <laughs> That's why I put the video up yesterday. Like, be careful who you surround yourself with. Stop hanging around people you don't want to become. I want to go. I want to go around people that's getting told <laughs> what they doing. Are oh, they working out? Are oh, they reading? Are they meditating? So the energy we surround ourselves in actually will and can change our life. So I just was. I think I was just more willing than the average person, um, and I was being blessed with a strong soul and mind, and I was willing to do what I had to do to get where I wanted to go. It wasn't easy. It was very uncomfortable. Very off putting. Um, it, I was burnt out. It's gonna be worth it, worth it, and you should do it if you want it. Mm. So, talk about the importance of uh, mentorship. I heard you mention a mentor earlier, and in the importance of if you don't have a mentor, just reading, because you know I feel like you know reading is kind of like a for, form of indirect mentorship, just getting the thoughts of others. Man, uh, just talk about how that can. Uh, positively impact your life? Yeah, you know, there's something I like to stand on is that perspective. Life is perspective. It's mm. not about being rich, it's not about being wealthy, not about being healthy, not about not that those things don't matter. It's really about perspectives because when you get around the people who are rich, who are successful, it's a perspective they have that makes them different. Not their education, it's their intellect, how they think what they grew up on. Uh, I think somebody posted something about Jada Kiss, uh, mom and living, having a two parent household. <laughs> and mm. I would have never thought that. Mm. But clearly his life is what his life is because yeah. of that, wherever he says it or not, it helps. So when people ask me, who do I look up to? When I was young, I was like, man, that's a, that's a good question. I was like, God, like I never had that one person, I was like, yeah, I love the Martins and the Malcolms, but they didn't move me in a way, I guess, because they wasn't presently living to me understand what the dream speech was or what by any means necessary meant until I got older. But like Tony Rob changed my life. And so I didn't have physical mentors. I had virtual mentors. Mm -hmm. Like I read all his books and I can relate to him because I started doing some research. I said, oh, this guy's been through pain. He's been through hell. He also was a Pisces like me, so I could kind of understand his spirit and how he wants to give and how he wants, he's emotional, but he's so passionate. And, and just hearing his story, I was inspired and motivated. Uh, Les Brown, Bob Proctor, all these guys were like my mentors. So as I got older, like I said, the guy at the club, Tom Turner, he didn't know he was my mentor. I made him my mentor. I just mm. watched it. It's like, oh, okay. Well, my other client over here, he's a big time jeweler. Oh, yeah. Look what this is what he does. I say, uh, I say, do you use your debit card or credit card? He said, debit card. Don't you ever use your debit card? You use credit card and cash. Debit card is only there for people who don't got good enough credit scores. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I'm in there like, huh? I'm just getting in game, but he mm. my client, but really my man. My other client, I'm like, oh, he having someone come wash his car every Wednesday. All right, well, I'm training you on Wednesday. Wash my car. 
So at the time, I was doing Uber. I made sure my car was clean every week, every week. Like, I got people in my car, bro. Like, I got to be clean. Mm. I'm, I'm watching the people I'm training because for some reason, I'm training highly successful people who are not famous and who are not celebrities. Oh, they got housemates. They got mates. Oh, they're millionaires. They own property. What are they doing? Oh, they want, they're coming to the gym every day. They're working out. They're taking action. So my course of my life, God has blessed me with certain people who don't know I'm experiencing for me to be who I am. You know, like most of my clients are Jewish, mm. right? They got real money. And so I'm learning their ideology and how they think, and they teach me about Judaism and Shabbat and all these things. And I'm learning about, and they rich and they're conservative, some of them. But then I'm from the, I'm from the hood. So I'm picking up on what they saying. I'm picking up what we thinking. I'm picking up on this is what true is. It's not that people from my environment don't work hard. They do. They don't have access and resources, right? So mm. I'm the I'm the middle man. I'm bridging mm. the gap. I'm understanding both worlds. So I'm getting mentorship. I'm learning about life. I've been on TV. I didn't struggle. So I'm in this space of like, hmm. Start questioning, why am I getting this information? Why am mm. I having these experiences? What am I supposed to be doing with this? Because everybody's not getting this. Then I'm coming back to, you know, homies in the neighborhood. Yo, bro, you know, um, you should get an escort. Or you got a Roth RA? <laughs> mm. You know, you should pay yourself first. Like all these little things, man, I'm just learning. Don't use your debit card. So... My mentors became my mentors from choice, but because I was admired about what I was seeing, I was like, how did they do that? What are they thinking about? And what are they doing? And then also, the world fools us because I went to college for four years. I got a college degree. And I realized it ain't meant for everybody. Because mm. when you get in this real world, nobody cares about your, your college degree. So Mm-mm. now maybe if you're a doctor, you're a dentist, right? A mm. lawyer. Granted, but man, it's about how you think. There's a uh, there's a quote they say uh, the A students work for the B students, the C students own the company, uh, the mm. B students run, and the D students own the land that the C students have their company on. Mm. If that ain't perspective, then what is that? <laughs> so. To all of you out there who got imposter syndrome and think you ain't good enough because you ain't got the uh, 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 expertise or the certifications or the education, stop that. It's about mm. the mentality. It's about having the right information for the situ- situation you want to embark on, not what the world thinks you should do. And I tell people, yeah, get married, but make sure you're spiritually married before you physically married. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's levels. That's not, their truth is not our truth. What they say might not be what you feel, so don't believe it. Mm. <laughs> and that's why I said the relationship with self is the most important relationship you can have in life because then you'll start understanding what to do, how to do it, and when to do it, and who you are in the space of any chaos um, and, uh, things in life. You've got to be able to discern who you are. So, yeah, man. And that's powerful, man. Uh, that statement about that, that that's real, man. The A students, B students, C students, D students. Like, life is not so cut and dry as people would like us to make it believe. Like, bro, I've, I've seen people that I went to school with do amazing. And it's like they didn't get the greatest grades, but they had that mentality. And it's just like, man, you can't you can't grade drive you can't grade a human being you know what i'm saying because we can go from from d straight to a we 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 but it's just the moment but that's all a learning that that's all that's your grade for the day you study you, and then you get a different grade yeah. it's just like man the game i mean life you you it's just a test and you can retake it you know every day we retake it and we try to get better score than we did <laughs> yesterday you know what i'm saying like but from what I've heard you say throughout this whole conversation is like, you don't believe in coincidence and neither do I. And I think that's a powerful thing for people to understand. Like everything in your life is building you up 
to become a greater person. It's just perspective. It's like, it's not coincidence. You're not seeing, um, you didn't meet your friend there that you went to high school with and introduce you to this. Like he, we don't believe in coincidence. We believe in opportunities. Right. We believe in things that have been presented to us for us to like eventually evolve our journey. Like everything is written like, and, and we don't believe in coincidence. If you don't have that perspective, you just see something like, Oh, well, this is cool. I just see my friend from high school and that's cool. But let me go about my way. It's just like you approach things different when your perspective is different. You, you notice an opportunity when your perspective is different, you can see, okay, this is the moment I have to act when your perspective is different or you just like oh dang well this opportunity they, they posted a thing on facebook saying they need somebody from baltimore well that's cool that's dope now let me go back to work or if you had a perspective you like this is tailor made for me this is my moment even if you said like you said i didn't think i was gonna get it but you can still see the synchronicity but you know it was funny that the, the awareness you're speaking on is the awareness i had when the text came because i was more of I was big on the law of attraction at the time and still is to this day. I was like, why is this coming into my life? Mm. But the backstory to that, I had just moved the first time. Prior to that, I had a roommate for five years in a one bedroom. Mm. Talking about sacrifice. Mm. My rent went from $650 to $1850. And when mm. I went to $1850, I'm like, how am I this? just doing Uber and training? Ooh. I was scared, bro. But I jumped. I jumped. So I jumped, and then the universe said, I saw you jump, but got this out. So six months in that new spot, mm. damn it, paying 2000 a month, the universe bought me the show through a friend. Mm. The universe responded to me. It was no coincidence. You know what I'm saying? It was no coincidence. That's how that happened. It wasn't just like, Ugh. I had several, that was several decisions being made where it's like, okay, I saw you jump. You went from six, oh, okay, 600 to 18. Oh, okay, cool. Let me see what you're going to do. You wanna, and I think at the time she was in New York running uh, restaurants, and she wasn't even nowhere near a slutty vegan. She was just getting it out the mud, working at the morgue, saving her money. But she always been a good soul and a good person, and that's why her success now. And I'm like, man, people really know she re she really like that. She mm. really if she gonna t she really that. So her success mm. makes sense. She really put me in position. She's the one who told me to do background acting. My first day in L.A. When I started working, I was doing Zach and Cody. I was the NBA player. DeVron, mm. DeVron Williams at the time. As a stand-in. Was making 175 a day. Mm. So she introduced me to TV on the front end and then put me back on TV in the back. And I said, oh, this person's part of my journey. <laughs> mm. But it was just a friend from high school that was one year older than me. And I barely saw her because she had some point uh, transferred. So all these things were working in my favor because I also was doing the work and I was curious. And I was open to change and I was open to change my life. Mm. So and that's yeah. powerful, man. Right. That's powerful. I also wanted to I didn't want to forget. Tell it, tell us about the um your your your, your mantra, it's miracle season. T -t tell me about that. Tell me what that means to you. So it's miracle season is a uh, metamorphosis, it's a transformation, mm. body, mind, spirit, right? Uh, right before I was going to go on TV for the first time for The Bachelorette, uh, I was in Burbank, California, CBS Studios. I was in my trailer with a producer <clears throat> named Louie, by the way. Louie, what up? If you out there, that's my guy. What up, Lou? Yeah, like, like it just kept coming to me, bro. Like, I'm like, it's very much here, man. But it was coming. It was like, oh, I'm like, how's that so, like, on? Like, how's that mm. so? It's very so I kept telling the producer, he's like, hey, my man, I think you should say it when you get on stage. You keep saying it, man. Like, mm. like well, he like, promise you I would. And you know you ever think about something, and then you think about it, and you know you want to say it, and you want to do it. And so, but not only do you think about it, and you want to say it, most times people don't say everything they wanted to say. Well, mm. bro, when I tell you when I went on stage and met Rachel Lindsay, shout out to Rachel, uh, I said everything I wanted to say. And it mm. felt like I hit a game and shot and a crowd went crazy. And I was like, yeah. It's, and I was like, oh shit, it's miracle season. And it's miracle season was a metaphor, a foreshadow for my time on the show. I went through hell. I went through challenges and changes. I fell in love and I got my miracle. 
but I had to go through a metamorphosis. When a, when a baby is being born, the mom has to carry the seed for nine months. She's going through a transformation. She's going through a metamorphosis. It's not comfortable. The miracle is not comfortable, but when you get it, it's rewarding. So nine months, the baby comes out, you get the miracle. But the real miracle is the process. So let me tell you on TV, all that uncomfortability and being challenged mm. was so tough. But on, on the back end, I fell in love and my life changed. And my miracles really start happening. My dreams, I got a podcast. I was getting paid to speak. Remember I told you the guy was like, people are not uh, paying you, but I was like, they paying attention. Then I actually mm. got a $5,000 check one time for a conference that I spoke on. So mm. all my dreams, because I went through this metamorphosis, this process, you know, the caterpillar becoming a butterfly and all these. It's miracle season. So it's miracle season can be the promotion at the job, that new relationship, uh, uh, that raise on your salary, uh, that career change, moving to a different city. You went to Atlanta. You're like, yeah, but it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. It's going to transform your mind, your body, and your spirit, if you will, in your season. <laughs> and that's powerful that's powerful i love it this miracle season i appreciate you uh uh doing this with me man uh jumping on here man and being on the program with us today and just sharing your gems your light um and just letting the people know like you can start from a and get all the way to z and we ain't at the end of the journey we just we just starting we we just in the middle of it but um yeah, i really appreciate you just, just, just dropping the gems. Can you tell tell them where they can find you on on, on social media or in, in your websites? Yeah, so you can go on social media on Instagram at Eric Bigger E R I C B I G G E R R. Twitter uh, E uh, underscore Bigger twenty two. I believe that's my uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, no E underscore Bigger. I'm sorry on Twitter, uh, and then um, also uh, TikTok Eric Bigger. And then sure, you can hit the link in my bio on Instagram and develop that mindset or evolve their life. Mm. Uh, also do a little bit of personal training on the side. I have a few books out, 100 Days of Wisdom, 100 Quotes to Live a More Inspired Life, a workbook, uh, Transformation, Change Your Mindset, Change Your Energy, Change Your Life. And all the things, I'm just here to shed light, positivity, love, authenticity, and be transparent and tell people, what it is and not what they think it is to be where you want, where you want to be. So uh, at the end of the day, everybody listening, when you can, if you can, just be yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the only person you can be because no one can be you more than you. And I think that's the most valuable person you should show up to every day is being yourself. So it's miracle season. <laughs> Man, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate y'all tuning in as well, man. It's miracle season. Eric Bigger and Ma the Poet. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. My God. Love.